So we're going to continue our discussion of so corporate social responsibility and begin talking about how to actually implement a corporate social responsibility plan. Now this will not be an in-depth uh, detailed plan over the next, following, uh, next few videos, but at least gives you some idea of the steps that you should take because there's no right or wrong answer because we don't necessarily even agree on what is or is not socially responsible. So first thing I want you to think about when you are trying to devise some sort of a corporate social responsibility plan is try to identify the sources of pressure for corporate social responsibility. In other words, draw out a stakeholder map and attempt to understand who are the most relevant stakeholders to your corporation and what kind of pressures they can apply on you. So for example, look at your competitors. Do they have a CSR plan or not? Does it contribute or detract from their competitive advantage? Look at, for example, your owners, stockholders and investors. Do they have expectations of corporate social responsibility in your firm? Look at advocacy groups. Are they happy or unhappy with the amount of CSR that you've implemented? What about communities? Do they expect the corporation to give something back to the local community? If so, how much and in what ways? Are there any sort of governmental expectations that the firm behave in some sort of a socially responsible manner? Do unforeseen events or crises launch demands or new demands for CSR initiatives? How about customers? Is your CSR program is something your customers will or will not pay for. And of course, employees. Do employees like or not like working for a firm that has a strong CSR program or the specific structure of CSR program that you have implemented? Now, there's kind of two different approaches to understanding CSR. We call them the progressive and the traditional model or So, the traditional business avenue is basically that you will meet the socially responsible obligations by meeting market demands and complying with the law. Basically, your overall goal of a corporation is just to make money and you do the absolute minimum of social responsibility activities. And then you've got the progressive side where you'd say, well, let's create value by, of course, we need to meet market demands, we need to be a financially viable corporation, but let's also contribute to the mitigation of social problems or improve society. Two different approaches. People would also call this, in addition to calling it maybe the traditional, this is also called a narrow response. See if I can get another pen here. I apologize. That's a little better. Versus expansive. So you've also got the narrow versus expansive. These are kind of synonyms. Again, so in the narrow, you obey the law, you don't do any further social responsibility obligations, profit, profit, profit. And then when you look at the expansive side, it's anticipate kind of new demands in the market um, with regards to social responsibility, alter your behaviors before you have any sort of pressure so you actually like a pioneer in social responsibility and then you make sure that social responsibility is something that is embedded all the way from the lowest employee to the top level of management. So the next thing that we're going to talk about here is CSR from almost a operations and a strategic perspective. The implementation of CSR follows more of an operations path, but we should also examine how CSR contributes or detracts from overall strategy. So we'll talk just a little bit about strategy um, over the next few minutes as well. But first, let's talk about how we would implement CSR in 
So you decide, and this model actually follows the Demaic approach. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Demaic. Those of you that are familiar with Lean or Lean Six Sigma would be very familiar with Demaic. And Demaic stands for Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve, and Control. So this is kind of a decision-making and implementation methodology. So the first thing you need to do is define what kind of CSR approach you'd like to implement in your firm. Do you want to do the traditional or the progressive or narrow CSR versus expansive CSR? What exactly do you want to do? And that's actually the hardest step, understanding what you actually wish to do. And of course, understanding how your CSR would contribute or detract from your overall firm strategy. So, first of all, figure out what you want to do. So I'll just kind of put some arrows here. Now, instead of measure, okay, what you would do is ask yourself, what kind of CSR program do we have now? How much money do we spend? Who do we give the money to? What do they use that money for? Just figure out what you've got going now. Get, figure out your baseline. Then you actually want to do some sort of strategic analysis. So the CSR analysis would basically say, okay, based on what we currently have now, how does that contribute or detract from our overall strategy? And how does that contribute or detract from the overall goals that we would like to have? Then instead of improve, for CSR we call this implement. And you typically do this through small pilot testing. So what you don't want to do is if you've got a million dollars available for CSR purposes, give all that million dollars right away to a single cause and just fire and forget. There was um, a great example. I, I was reading the news. I believe it was Facebook. You know, Mark Zuckerberg had some ungodly number of millions of dollars that he gave to New Jersey public schools. Uh, and he gave that money specifically for uh, improving, I guess it was infrastructure within the public schools. So, you know, making sure that there were chairs, desks, projectors, you know, make sure the buildings and everything was just fine. Well, the problem is once he gave that to the New Jersey public schools, the union, the teachers union got involved and then it wound up going to pay teachers, including some of them I guess were allegedly underperforming. And none of it actually, or very little of it actually went to improving the infrastructure. So what you want to do, maybe a smarter approach if I were to advise uh, Mark Zuckerberg in this case, is maybe give you know, a few hundred thousand first, you know, a small proportion of the amount that you give and see what they actually do with it. Then decide whether you'd like to continue giving. So don't just dump it all at once, but maybe give it in small steps or kind of spread your bets a little bit, you know, play with it. Give it a little bit of a pilot program. Then what we would call the control phase in Demaic, in the CSR, is reporting and verification. And reporting and verification basically means did the organizations that we gave the money to do what they were supposed to do with that money? Are we happy with the way that process actually worked out? Okay. Do we actually give the money? That's another good example. So I get asked this a lot. Well, exactly how does DMAIC compare to implementing a CSR program? So let me go into it just a little bit, a little bit more detail. So if you're looking at it from a lean methodology, DMAIC, the D for define in Lean Six Sigma or lean jargon, would be figure out what problem your organization is facing right now. Compare that to the D that I've used here where that's just what kind of approach do we want to have for CSR traditional or narrow, progressive or expansive. So what are we doing right now and what do we want to do with it? It's a little bit different than what problem we're we currently facing. Okay, to define. Measure from a lean or a lean six sigma perspective would be Give me all the data that you have on the process as it is right now. 
Whereas when we're looking at it from a CSR perspective, we would say, what kind of CSR programs do we currently have in place? How much money are we giving? Who are we giving it to? What's it being used for? Analyze in the Lean Six Sigma phase would be analyze all the data on the current process you, process that you currently have from the measurement perspective. Whereas in CSR implementation, you'd say, is the CSR approach that we have chosen now contributing to our overall strategy and is it contributing to the strategy for CSR that we would like to have? Instead of an improve phase, and so in Lean Six Sigma the improve phase basically says let's do a little bit of pilot testing and see if we can actually fix this process. Compare that to the implementation phase which says let's do pilot plans on giving and that kind of, uh, are giving it a new CSR program to see if it actually works, so it's almost identical. The control phase in Lean Six Sigma says, let's write standard operating procedures and make sure that we permanently have changed this process and we don't go back to the problems that we had before. Whereas in CSR implementation, reporting and verification for the control would mean, um, let's make sure that the money that we've given or the way we're using the money matches what we wanted to do that we haven't gone back to maybe our old ways. Yeah. The only other thing that I might add in addition to defining the problem with regards to the traditional narrow CSR or progressive versus expansive is ask yourself the question, does the CSR program that we have now and the CSR program that we would like to have does that support our mission statement, our organization's mission statement? And your mission statement is a brief statement of corporate purpose um, or corporate vision. Now some of you may be asking, huh, you know, I'm working, I wonder where I can find my mission statement. It depends on the firm. If you are operating in a large S&P 500 type of firm, you can usually find it on the corporation's website. Um, if nothing else, there's usually an investor's portion of these firms' websites you can look it up there. If not, of course, your HR uh, officer should certainly know what your firm's mission statement is. It's kind of problematic if you as an employee do not know what a mission state, your mission statement is. Not a bad reflection on you necessarily, but it's probably a bad reflection on your management team and also your human, human resources if you don't know your mission statement. Don't worry, most employees in the company don't actually know what their mission statement is. I have been to a lot of kind of customer service stores, I won't name them in this video, um, but they have a cork board right next to the bathroom and their mission statement's always there. I guess they figure people are going to go to the bathroom during the day and eventually at some point they'll look at the board and figure out what the mission statement is. So I'm going to stop here because we've talked about kind of the implementation side, uh, more of a, a, of a tactical approach to corporate social responsibility. In our next video, we'll actually talk more about the strategic side. Looking forward to seeing you then.